ocean, over the clouds, and around the world. Here comes the wild side of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now, let's have a wild welcome for your furry friends. Stinky and Jake! Now it's the Animal Show! <laughs> Hello, all you little animals out there. I'm Stinky. And I'm Jake. And today we're going to meet the world's largest and smallest birds, the albatross and the hummingbird. And they're going to teach us all about flying. Flying? Mm -hmm. Well, that's great, Jake. I have always wanted to learn how to fly. No, stinky skunks don't fly. Well, gee, Jake, you always tell me that I can do anything if I believe I can. Well, that's true, but I, I didn't well, really... Well, great. Then I believe that I can become the world's first flying skunk. But, Stinky... Uh, 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 I think we should talk this over. And now it's time for... That's amazing! Yeah. Today, the deep-sleeping hummingbird. What's so amazing about a deep sleeper? I'm a pretty solid snoozer myself. Not like the hummingbird. Yeah. Did you know that at night the hummingbird sleeps so deep that it's almost like hibernating? I did not know that. It's a kind of sleep called torpor. The hummingbird heartbeat slows down and her body temperature drops so she can save energy. When the sun warms her up in the morning, the hummingbird is ready to go. Huh. Personally, I need a hot cup of coffee to get me going. The deep sleeping hummingbird. Oh, another happy napping bird that'll make you say... <gasps> That's amazing! And now it's time for, for me to become the world's first flying skunk. <gasps> and for all of us to find out more about flying, here she is from the seas of the southern hemisphere. Hemisphere. Molly the Albatross. This is it. Showtime. I'll start yapping and you start flapping. <laughs> we'll let this place air bomb before you know it. <laughs> Welcome, Molly. Yeah, Stinky the future flying skunk reporting for his first lesson. <laughs> flying skunk? Well, Stinky wants to know what it takes to fly. Mm -hmm. Well, in my case, it takes big wings. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. Okay. See those wings? Mm -hmm. For an albatross, that's what flying's wow. all about. We have a wingspan that can measure eight feet from end to end. Well, gee, I don't have any wings. Is that going to be a problem? Afraid so, Stinky. You need wings if you want to fly like an albatross. Well, this albatross doesn't seem to be flapping its wings very much. He doesn't need to, Jake. You see, albatross don't fly by flapping. We fly by floating on the wind. We like glider planes, and we're natural experts at following the wind to get us where we want to go. Now, here's a handsome bird for you. That's a waved albatross. He lives on the Galapagos Islands. So are there different species of albatross? More than a dozen. The wave, the black brow, the yellow nose, the gray-headed, the black-footed, the sooty, the light-mantled Well, sooty. I could be a striped smelly albatross. I'm sure you could, Stinky. No, no, no. What are these albatross doing? They're getting ready for the breeding season. It's the big event on the albatross social calendar. Yeah, why are they hitting their beaks together like that? Jake, that's the albatross beak dance. Right, Molly? Sort of. That's called big dueling. And it's one of the things male and female albatross do to find partners. Well, now this big dueling also shows other albatross that they've chosen a nest site, right? You sure know your albatross, Jay. I try. It's true. These duels and mating displays are how albatross decide who gets the best nesting sites and the prime beachfront property. Well, let's get back to flying. What else do I need? If you want to fly, Stinky, you need feathers. Like these albatross feathers right here. Whoa, those help you to fly? Not only that, they keep us warm and dry when we're flying out over the ocean. Now, is this an albatross family? That's right, Jake. We usually live in groups like this so we can watch after each other's nests and keep predators away. But do you have a lot of babies? We only have a new chick every other year. That gives us time to take care of the young ones and get them on their own. Oh, oh is this where you teach little albatrosses to fly? Right. With wings as big as ours, it takes time before the kids are ready to soar into the wild blue yonder. What's the hardest part of learning to fly? Personally, I think the toughest thing is learning how to take off. It's not easy to get going when you got a wingspan that's eight feet long. Mm. An albatross will stretch and flap them waddle down the beach as fast as she can, trying to get the wind beneath her wings. Now, once you take off, how long can you stay up in the air? As long as we catch a good breeze, we can stay airborne for hours. We may not be too graceful on the ground, but once we get up in the air... Oh, there's not a prettier sight in the sky. Of course, some albatross think the hardest part of flying is learning how to come in for a landing, and she's done it. 
As you see, we albatross aren't any more graceful at landing than we are at taking Whoa, off. Whoa, there's another one. Whoa, look at that. What a crash. Of course, there is one easy way for taking off. What's that? You can jump off a cliff. Well, it sure is a long way down. Even that albatross doesn't want to do it. He's just waiting for a strong wind. See? It's easy peasy. All you do is jump, spread your wings, and let the wind do the rest. And being so close to the water is good for finding food. We albatross love to eat fish and squid, but sometimes it's fun just to glide through the sky. Well, thanks for the flying lesson, Molly, but uh, I think I'll skip the cliff jumping. That's up to you, Stinky. But don't forget those wings. See you in the sky. Huh? What? Wings? Wings? Did you hear that, Jake? I've got to get wings. Oh, wait, Stinky, Stinky, uh, you can't go now. Why? Because it's time for... Oh. <gasps> Baby talk. Oh, we're sitting on a beach where we're breathing in the beach air. Oh, it's so grand, sitting in the sand. Hey, Ma, what's that? It's just your cousin Alex, dear. Lucky Alex. He's down on the beach, sitting on the nice soft sand. Ooh, it must be so nice. Look at them down there. Come on, Ma, let's go down on the beach. Please, please, please. It'll be grand sitting on the sand. You'll like it. Can we go? Huh? No, dear. I'd rather stay up here. Okay. If you don't want to go, then I guess I'll just go by myself. I'll get off these lumpy hard rocks and go and sit on the nice soft sand with Alex. And I'm going to do it now. Uh, you you want to go to the beach or up to the rocks? Uh, no, I want to just stay right here. Yeah. And now it's time for... Uh, for me to go get my wings. But, Stinky... Well, too bad he didn't stick around. Here come some real high flyers. Oh, baby bird, up in your nest. It's time we put you to the test. It's time to try to beat your wings and fly. Other birds prefer to glide. They spread their wings and hold. But you must try to beat your wings and fly Beat them fast, beat them slow Which way feels best you're sure Reporter getting you answers to today's tough questions. Let's see if one of these animals knows the answer. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> yeah? Can you answer this question? Which of these animals can hover? The hammockop, the pied kingfisher, the kestrel, or the mountain bluebird? Your answer. Uh, what's hover? Hovering means to hang in the air like a helicopter. Where's a helicopter? Track What's a tractor? The answer is that two of these birds can hop. The kestrel and the pied kingfisher. First, let's take a look at the kestrel. The kestrel is a type of hawk, and as you can see, it's extremely good at hovering. Kestrels have excellent eyesight. They can see even the smallest prey on the ground beneath them. By hovering on wind currents, kestrels can cover large areas of land looking for food. They fly some 30 to 50 feet above the ground, hover and watch. And when they see something good to eat, like a small mammal, reptile, or even a juicy insect, they drop down on top of it. This is the pied kingfisher. Unlike the albatross and kestrel who rely on wind to lift them into the air, the pied kingfisher is more like a hummingbird. That is, it has a special wing structure which allows it to beat its wings very rapidly. The speed and design of its wings allow this kingfisher to hover in the calmest of air. 
This is Ronda Rat reporting on Hovering. Back to you, Stinky and Jake.